Thank you. All right, here we go. Into king and country. We have a uh, vertical split here. Bottom left, upper right is one side, and bottom right, upper right is the other. Human, night elf, mirror matchup, as you say. So uh, walk me through this, Monk. What are we looking to see? What are we looking to expect? Yeah, I think from uh, Dark and Reaver. Dark and Reaver are known as very, very predictable players. So unless they have a balls to the wall strat, they're going to go with Archmage uh, uh, Demon Hunter. And they're going to, uh, the Demon Hunter is going to creep to level three super fast. Um, meanwhile, uh, Hylua and Smurf are going to be less predictable. However, we see Smurf uh, is actually opening Altar first. In the last War 3 Champions Finals, he had never opened Altar first. He always went uh, Panda, like a, generally a very weird strat. Um, and we can see he put an Ancient of War in position to uh, creep his Golem as well. Um, so I'm curious to see whether he goes a Demon Hunter, which is kind of the standard uh, these days um, as, as Night Elf, or if he goes for a Keeper, and we're going to see a Demon Hunter here. So he's going to stick with the trend. Um, typically, this Ancient of War positioning from both players, it's generally safe. Um, the, the only exception is if like you have an Orc enemy or like someone just happens to run across the map. But with uh, Human and uh, Night Elf, um, you, what you're typically going to expect to see is a lot of like macro based play. You're not going to just like run across the map to to hit your opponent or harass your opponent's creeping. So um, I, what I expect is we're going to see uh, very like safe creeping or, um, mm -hmm. uh, from all players. Um, another thing interesting to note is that both human players actually did not spawn in like the best position in that if they were to expand to their quote unquote natural, it would be more exposed. Um, uh, to the enemy so i'm actually right. I, I actually do expect both players to expand on this particular map but i'm curious which expansion um they decide to take and both expansions i i think are viable sounds good sounds good seems like both demon hunters as you mentioned gonna come out creeping archmage as well for both the human players and one archmage is going straight across the map we're even gonna find a wisp there so that's first blood for him militia immediately is this a three farm expo Ooh. He's still my heart. I am a big fan of the three farm mechs, so immediately going towards that uh, right hand side three o'clock positioning. Ancient War kind of take a little bit of damage, but should be all right. So yeah, there's going to be a very, very fast expansion, and so far no signs of harass, but that can always change later on with the Demon Hunter with Immolation potentially. But for now, it's just going to be a crystal ball, but at least he'll have the two base economy cooking straight off the hop. Yeah, uh, th this dispatch is a little difficult because um, because the rush distance is just long enough that you have these peasants fighting um, for a bit and you have to take some damage with the footman. Um, but I think Reaver did the best he could here um, and he's going to get up the expansion right away. Meanwhile, we have Halua. He's going to go for a tech up and he's going to go rifleman. Um, so this is, we, we actually see the two main strats from uh, Human Night Elf, which is number one, you expand uh, as Reaver and uh, Dark. And number two, um, uh, as Hylua, you could go Rifleman and go for potentially uh, some kind of timing push. So Hylua is now pressuring the Demon Hunter of Dark. Dark did go for Immolation, and Smurf actually didn't. He went for Evasion and Mana Burn. The Demon Hunter of Dark is going to be pressured back a little bit. A tiny bit of experience going to be stolen, going to Inchat Archmage of Hylua. Closer to level three, which could be really, really important. Arcane Tower is coming up for Reaver, and that expansion will be safe. The Peasants, maybe not, but for now... It's just going to be a very, very clean expansion. Archmage just trying to pressure a little bit, but he's alone for the time being. Both Demon Hunters, both Archmage are going to meet on the 3 o'clock positioning, and then this could really determine the game. How much damage is Reaver going to take here if he cannot defend his expansion? Yeah, this is really the pivotal point of any game involving a human expansion and any expansion of all. How much, uh, how much damage can you uh, deal to the expansion? And it looks like Reaver, from uh, from Dark and Reaver's perspective, the, the Scout Tower is going up. Um, the Arcane Tower is almost ready to finish. So once the Arcane uh, Tower finishes, I think we're going to see a pretty fortified expansion. Reaver, just to be safe, he actually called five militia. Uh, that that number of militia kind of tells you, oh, he he really thinks there's going to be a lot of pressure, um, and he's really going to need those five militia. But you can actually see he actually made the decision to retreat them. Um, because he realized, oh, like, this defense is going great. I don't need to actually pull Militia at all. 
Yeah, big fan of this defense for the, the red team so far. They played it very, very defensive. We see the Archmage of Reaver is still extremely healthy, whereas Hylua committed a lot of footman HP. It seemed like they were very desperate to get some damage done, but really got absolutely nothing done. Not even damage on the heroes, which is uh, tends to be the a start of a good harass. If you can lower the heroes, force them back, then you find your way to the peasants. But of course... Ailua, Smurf, they're just waiting for their timing. They're waiting for the Riflemen, they're waiting for their Tier 2s, their second heroes to be in. So any damage they get done now is kind of gravy on top, but what really has to work out for them is the timing. Demon Hunter, oh, barely makes it to the Moonwell there for Dark, and he will be safe, but he's running out of juice. Yeah, um, he's, I think he's going to be able to heal up. He has one extra Moonwell in the top left of his base. Um, oh, we have Smurf coming in for the harass as well, so we're going to see all four heroes and all four armies converge here. One archer going down. Second archer caught out of positioning. There is labs open, of course, so there could be a reveal if necessary. The moon juice still low. Dark force back a little bit. Reaver trying to do a block. The demon hunter of dark will retreat to the arcane tower at the expansion. There is a decent number of footmen, but now a naga comes in, and that's going to help this pressure a ton. Two riflemen. A naga could find a lot of kills, but Shadow Melt helping out could see a reveal soon. TP force. Demon hunter goes back home, but. Can he heal up fully? I'm not sure if he's going to be able to. He's got a Moonwell with about 220 juice in it, which should be all right. But this pressure, definitely doing some damage. Yeah, Reaver, real, uh, Dark Reaver really needs to get uh, a Wisp or something into the the ba uh, into near the tavern because mm -hmm. Hylua and Smurf have map control. They were able to get the the, the Naga upon hitting uh, uh, hitting tier two, um, and the lack of the Naga is really hurting, uh, really hurting. Uh, the Dark and Reaver. Uh, they decide instead to go for a Potom because that's what's, that's the only thing you can really build here. Um, and we see even some militia call from Hylua. Uh, kind of an impromptu decision. I don't think this was necessarily part of the plan, um, but they, I think they, they see that this push is going so well that militia are coming. Um, we have Defend up, which is going to be um, which is be really good for, uh, against the mass range from Hylua and Smurf. However, there's just not enough footmen um, how many racks do we see? We see oh, the, the, the double racks is up. Oh my god, we actually see we had five footmen queued up in one of the racks at some point. So the, the, uh, the macro is maybe a little slipping on Reaver's part. Yeah, Reaver maybe needed to go back, consolidate, call Militia, and then TP in with the Militia. Could definitely help with this defense, but it might be too little too late now, at least for that play. In terms of the defense, it's still very much possible for them to hold. The Tier 2's done, there's an AP up in the back, they're building Ancient Lore as well. The Mountain King slowly running out of mana, one more Stormbolt, but he's used the Stormbolts he had before to clean up the footmen that had Defend, and of course, as you mentioned, a full ranged army. They really need to prioritize those footmen, or else they're just going to destroy all these uh, these uh, ranged units for now. Stormbolt finds another Archer, but the AP starting to get value, but also the towers in the back. One Arcane already up, and a Clarity for the Mountain King. And now the Priest sustain with that Brilliant Sora, with that Clarity. is going to have no issue staying in this fight for the time being. Yeah, I, I do think that the Footman reinforcements are, are slowly trickling in. Um, they're coming in two at a time, and the build time of Footman is pretty quick. So I think uh, eventually there might be a critical mass of Footman. Um, and maybe the Ancient Protectors will be able to hold off, but yeah, it remains to be seen. Yeah, and for sure Reaver's economy is doing excellent right now. Of course, he's not the one being pressured. So as you mentioned, he can just keep spamming those footmen. We see he doesn't have a ton of gold bank, and he has a decent amount of lumber too. So if he just keeps on macroing, spamming the footmen, tacking up behind it, he should eventually have the much stronger army, but it's really going to come down to how much damage Dark takes. There's a level 3 Archmage for Hylua, but two APs up at the back. And uh, Water Elementals, although they're really, really good, are not the best at breaking Ancient Protectors. Footmen marching forward. Stormbolt continues to find the kills. Hylou's been doing an excellent job of prioritizing those Footmen. Demon Hunter of Smurf taking a little bit of damage, but he's still up in the front. He's still getting the Mana Burns off. There's the Blood Mage. The macro I was talking of Reaver is starting to kick in a little bit. I imagine he's got Sanctums also coming uh, up at home. Yeah, I, I love this Blood Mage pick. Um, it's gonna, in these kind of situations where there's a, like just a constant grind, uh, it's gonna be really amazing for the sustain. He's gonna be able to drain oh. his opponent's Demon Hunter. Oh, and summon <laughs> Wild Elementals. However, Oops. this Water Element, one Water Elemental is, uh, probably had better days. Yeah, that was, he was a little born, bit silly. He was born in an attic, and he's gonna live in this little, little hole for the rest of his life. Yeah, we'll call him we'll call him Harry Potter for now. He's stuck behind the Hunter's Hall. First clap and Stormbolt combination. Roar is doing a whole lot. We have bears all of a sudden. 
that's adding a lot of damage. Blood Mage goes down, did transfer a decent amount of mana, but of course, as we just mentioned, that mana was invested into pretty much nothing. And I do think Dark and Reaver have to retreat to these, these APs. Oh, the range units to the north of the fight are starting to cancel some towers, but Arcane Towers are just destroying the Dryads. And although the two base has been working overtime the entire game, it seems like, slowly but surely, Hylou and Smurf are just pressing forward, and this Night Elf base might be crumbling soon. Uh, yeah, crumbling indeed. Um, we see, we, we have a bunch of casters and some mortars from Reaver as well, um, but I don't know if they're ever going to be able to break this base. Um, but it might be just worth it for Dark to retreat, TP out. Oh, he doesn't actually even have a TP, and Ooh. because the Mountain King's there, that's going to be hard, so... Uh, I don't even know if that's an option. Yeah, it was tough. He just lost so much Moonwells early on, really for nothing. Like, you know, I did mention we were talking about the, the defense of the expansion. It was very, very well done. They played very defensive with their heroes, but then all of a sudden the Demon Hunter of Dark just took way too much damage. All the Moonwells were gone, then his shop got cancelled, and he's been pretty much in recovery ever since then. But okay, Reaver, the carry of this game so far is trying to press forward. The Blood Mage is back, and a good start to this defense. Get a lot of kills. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Smurf, he kind of got bait, uh, baited by all these uh, Dryads, and he's just not in position. So we're actually going to see, see a 2v1 uh, up here from Dark and Reaver. Uh, this is about as good as they can hope for, given the positioning. And because of Reaver's choice to get two Reavers, uh, two Mortars, maybe he can just retreat back into uh, the back of Dark Space and just uh, reverse the siege from there. But the Bears come in, five Bears! That's 20 to 5 Bears coming in, and this might just be too much. Yeah, there's what they were macroing, there's what they were working towards the whole game, and the first GG is called, and that's 1-0 for Hylou and Smurf with a pretty nice early timing there against the fast expansion. Nice. Yeah, uh, kind of re really so, unexpected. Sorry, go ahead, Neo. What did you think about that game? Yeah, that was uh, an awesome back and forth, great tug of war. Not the best early game for Dark, especially maybe a little bit of a liability in this game, but Hylou and Smurf working really well together. They've been part of UMAT for ages at this point. And you can see that was not the first two and two they ever played. Very good timings, um, adjusting on the spot with the tower push after the early game, as you said. And weird positioning throughout the game for Dark and Reaver. Um, if they can hold on maybe two minutes longer, could have been their game, but there was no time for that. 1-0. Yeah, we saw shades of the army of Reaver uh, towards the end. He was starting to really hit a power spike there when the mortar teams hit, kicked in, when he killed those couple of riflemen. They started to clean up the, the footmen in the front. But then all of a sudden, what Smurf was working towards the whole game, pretty much just a straight tech to bears. And then as you mentioned, Monk, just like five bears there in your face, all morphing at the same time. You're kind of screwed at that stage. So uh, yeah, there's a really nice sort of follow-up to the timing. Like, you have the Rifleman for Hylua, that's a big power spike, but you're just holding on, holding on, holding on, continuing to pressure, and then all of a sudden, five bears. And that's what really when you uh, when you kick into overdrive. So yeah, super well played. Very aggressive, very giga-chad, if I do say so myself, of Hylua and Smurf. Yeah, well, one thing I want to note is I, I think actually Dark and Reaver had a pretty good early game, all things considered, in that they took no economic damage. I think the real mistake here was actually that I think there was some an, an issue with uh, Reaver's macro, as we can saw. We saw like five footmen being queued at one point. Mm -hmm. um, so something went off there. Um, another adjustment um, you could make as the human player, um, and I play human in two v two, so uh, this happens to me a lot. Is sometimes you can build the barracks, you can speed build your second barracks, which allows you to get those extra footmen out early. And um, a third adjustment, another adjustment you could possibly do is build the second racks in your expansion rather than in your main so that it reinforces just a little faster. Those footmen were probably coming in like 30, 40 seconds after they were built, which right. makes a huge difference. Um, typically with that that Night Elf uh, human army, uh, like the pushes actually aren't that strong um, at that particular timing because um, you don't have like Orc tier two, for instance, where Orc is really strong at tier two. Um, we really didn't see any tier two from um, Smurf at all. So I think um, I think it was, again, it was just like an opportune timing. Um, they weren't really planning to end the game there and it just happened to go so well that things ended up that way. 
Alright, before we jump into the next game, I gotta shout out a couple of people. Thank you, Jumbo13, for the Prime. Uh, oh no, for the real sub it is, actually. Making use of that September, I see. Woody Wood with the 100 bits. Thank you for your awesome work for the community. Neo and Carson, uh, you're keeping it alive. Thank you. Also, Gideon, my brother in arms, uh, for Rara Land, giving me his Prime. That's so sweet. Hi, Gideon. Hello. 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 Oh. Hi. Hi. Sorry, go on. Awesome people everywhere, less than three. <laughs> that is correct. And uh, PXZAP for the 32 month. Also, supporting the tournament is Pishna with the coupon code and the green one with the coupon code. Avanel with $5 for the players and community. And we want to see more of that, everybody. W3C finals. Back to Warcraft.com leads you to the match arena. We got 40 players. They need to eat. We need to support them. Let's go. Map two. Match points for the underdogs in Smurf and Hylua. All right. On to Shattered Exile, a map that I am more familiar with um, in general, but also, of course, familiar with in 1v1. We do again have the vertical split. We do have. Smurf and Hylua on the left-hand side, Dark and Reaver on the right-hand side. Talk me through this map. Talk me through if there will be any differences, you think, here, Monk. Yeah, um, one key difference. I think Shattered Exile is known. It's one of my favorite maps as well. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad we have this map in the series. Um, this is typically known as... Um, it's known as a macro map, but maybe to a less of an extent as King Country. You have this very easy um, or relatively easy expansion between the two players. And because this expansion is directly between the two players, it's generally uh, relatively uh, well, def uh, easily defendable. Um, mm -hmm. So what I expect from Dark and Reaver is they're going to def, I would say for almost certainly they're going to try to expand again. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen from uh, Smurf and uh, Hylua, but I'm actually, if this just this exact same thing happened uh, in the last game where we have a one base versus, or three versus base versus two base scenario, yep. I'd love to see it play out again and see what adjustments that Dark and Reaver make in order to defend uh, the, the incoming push. Yeah, of course, you mentioned the, the barracks positioning and also just the macro in general. I do think it really comes down to, to, to Reaver playing well under pressure there. Oh, the Demon Hunter of Darkness, not a good start, denies the big creep there. Unfortunately, that's going to delay his level 2 for quite a bit. But yeah, again, I do believe we have that 3 farm expansion. The Archmage, though, kind of getting owned a little bit. But um, yeah, I do, I do think last game really... Oh, rip. Reaver had a... Uh, no excuse to mess up his macro because it wasn't his base being pressured. It's not as though he had to micro on a tons of fronts. His expansion was kind of uncontested, so he should have been macroing perfectly. It was really dark that was under pressure, which might... I don't know what you think about this. Is it a mistake to go for the all-in into the Night Elf space? Should you go rather towards the human's expansion or maybe... Probably not the human's main base, but uh, the human's expansion over the Night Elf space? What do you think about that? Um, I think in that particular positioning, the Night Elf was probably an okay choice just because of the fact that the expo was in between the two players. Right. I think if the expo were like to the side of the two players, I think that, that probably would have made more sense. But mm -hmm. I, I don't fault them at all. Um, but also the fact that there's an like, arcane tower there, um, it just, I, I think what happened is like they just happened to be like fighting in the night elf base and they're like, oh, maybe we can just push there now. Yeah, sometimes you just go for the, the intuitive plays, and yeah, also the moon wells were, were low and everything. We could see something slightly different, and we are seeing something slightly different. It's going to be three base, three base this game, so we get that macro game. Maybe not uh, the best macro map, or at least, you know, between the two that we've seen, but still a macro game, which I'm very excited to see if this does go later, if this does go past the 10 minute mark, what sort of armies, what sort of hero compositions can we expect here? Yeah, um, from the Night Elf side, I, uh, once it gets to like three base or three bears versus three base, I think mm -hmm. you're gonna t see very typical bears. Um, triads, you can go mass triad, but um, typically you only see mass triad uh, when like the Night Elf is expanding or you really want to defend a push. From the right. human player, you see like the very. I think what you would expect to see is either a, a typical tier two army with mass spellbreakers or potentially um, you you go up to like mortars, inner fire knights. Um, both uh, options are, are valid and it just happens uh, to depend on whether you want to go for more of a tier 2 timing or more for a longer tier 3 game. Gotcha, gotcha. And of course, later on, if we do have that Archmage, Blood Mage combination again, Blizzard, Flame Strike is so valuable if you don't have Mass Strides and Mass Breakers, which uh, maybe one of the two players will not go Magic Immune Units. Level 3 Archmage on the side of Hylua, and the pressure is beginning. Demon Hunter taking a lot of damage 
for Smurf there, but he did have a Potion of Invulnerability, now pressuring Dark back a little bit. Creep's getting involved in the action, so Potion of Invulnerability forced a lot of Moonwells gone, and also, worth noting, these Assassins, I forgot about these little guys on this map, but pretty valuable, the Poison Damage, the Shadow Meld, these are pretty strong Mercenaries. Yeah, Assassins are pretty insane. Um, we have a little skirmish on the bottom as well. The two human players are duking it out versus each other. Uh, notably, Hylua with his creep pattern, he's able to hit level 3 and uh, pressure Reaver. Uh, Reaver was, of course, able to get a faster expo, but this level 3 Archmage from Hylua is making all the difference. Um, it's just typically like in a human mirror where Night Elves aren't involved. Well, uh, faster, you, you just really have to get level 3 um, around <laughs> equally, uh, around an equal time as your uh, opponent, or else you're going to be in a wor world of hurt. And to the north of the map by the mercenary camp, we did see Dark be forced into the town portal. And yeah, this level 3 Archmage just make such a difference here. I guess, as you mentioned, the different creep routes, it just comes down to Hylua doing the later expansion, but having the quicker creep route, whereas Reaver preferred that 3 farm expansion. Hard to say what ends up being better, but in this game, it's certainly the level 3 Archmage. Here comes Smurf in with the Naga. Both Night Elf players now have a Naga, and both players are being pressured. The hero's not the healthiest in the world, but... Uh, the red team here on the right hand side does have the home base advantage. Demon Hunter, oh, hello? Smurf is, yeah, Steven Hunter is taking a lot of damage. Oh, he's paying attention, but he's forced into a TP. I don't think that TP was like, like if you were paying attention maybe a little more, it wasn't necessary, which mm -hmm. means the pressure is going to have to stop. Um, Hylua eventually is going to have to retreat, um, and we're going to be reset to more of a uh, just a straight up macro game. I do like that Moonwell as well from Dark. That's uh, nice, especially, you know, if something like an Archmage gets very, very low, it can be quite useful. It seems like Smurf heals up, goes straight cross map again. The Demon Hunter Dark catches him midway, eats a mana burn, but at least he does get the uh, the information. Reaver trying to heal up at the lab. That is a super valuable scroll right now, healing up all those footmen. And we're going to have a team fight yet again, but the Naga is so low that it's going to probably be going down to the Demon Hunter. Dark is going to find that kill eventually, but the Naga oh, almost goes down for Dark as well, but he finds his way to the Moon Wells. It's the last of the Moon Juice, but still the defense not looking too bad for the red team. Yeah, the Reaver, made, one adjustment that he made uh, is that he made two racks uh, yet again versus uh, Hylua's one rack. So we got a little supply block right here, but we actually see four footmen in one of these racks yet again. Um, but this adjustment is going to allow him to eventually uh, hold off this push. Um, typically, I don't typically get a second Rax in these kind of situations, which um, actually makes me question. I wonder if uh, Dark and Reaver know that there's no, um, there's no, there's a, uh, if there's an expansion. And right. uh, the answer to that is actually, no, I don't think they, they do because they just scanned the expo and they just discovered it. So I think the second uh, Rax from Reaver might have been um, might have been because they were unsure of the game state and whether there would be a push. And given that last game, Hylua and Smurf did do a push, um, they expected to have to try to defend that push uh, yet again. Um, to, a lot of times in like best of threes, what I tend to find is you focus on what you lost to in the first game and you just hyper focus on that, even though right. like it might not be the same situation. Absolutely, yeah. And look what this is translating into as well. The tech advantage for Hylua is huge, and he's also going straight tier 3. This little block there, Demon Hunter of Dark taking quite a bit of damage, and doesn't have bears just yet, so this will be difficult to recover from, but he's going to be able to get out of here without losing a hero, I think. But yeah, only now tier 2 for Reaver, and halfway to tier 3 for Hylua. He's going to have the much stronger army, Griffin Aviary and Arcane Sanctum, on the way up as well. So... If Reaver does not realize the tech that Hylua is going into, can Human on Tier 2 do anything really against the Tier 3 Human, or do they have to match techs here? Um, I think you could try Riflemans, but that in the long term, that's not going to be the best. Oh, this Demon Hunter is a little stuck. He has a Rejuve, though, so he's able to come out. Um, I think oh. the... the oh. And a, a great surround from, from Reaver. Is he going to be able to hold this round? Oh, Demon Hunter is just so strong with the Ring, with the Rejuve. Ah, I, I'm not sure. Uh, there's just a crazy fight here. A lot of footmen are, they have defend, but they're still falling very quickly. Um, the creeps are getting involved. We have uh, Dark with a Master Bear. Smurfs, Master Bear's just kicked in. Um, I have no idea what's happening. The, the <laughs> creep is about to drop and the item is going to go to uh, Dark and Reaver. Yeah, the positioning here was just much, much better for the teal team because they didn't have the creeps just attacking them the entire time. The surround was nice, but the two rejuves 
that Smurf had available to him kept that Demon Hunter safe. It was a very, very messy fight. One bear goes down for each side, and those are super valuable bears because, of course, they had a little bit of mana on them, too. And the recovering from this fight may not be the easiest to do if they don't have Rage of the Moonwells, but Dark goes back home now. And the remainder of the creeps in the center might go to Smurf and Hylua. And that Tier 3 going to be kicking in right now. First Griffin on the way, and Breakers. So it's two Sanctum uh, with, for Casters and Breakers, Knights, Griffins. The Griffins have not been shown yet, though. So we could see a position where Dark overbuilds Bears, and then he just kind of gets owned. Yeah, we're seeing a, uh, a Rifle Mortar Caster army from Reaver. Mm -hmm. I would say that's, that's probably one of the stronger Tier 2 armies you could get. Um, However, what that does mean is that there's not going to be um, any breakers um, in his army, or right. likely no breakers in his army, um, which means that um, if uh, at, we can see a priest of depth training is being researched from Hylua, if the inner fire comes up, that's going to be um, amazing uh, for Hylua. And just because Hylua has all this tier three tech, I wouldn't like the Griffins are nice, but the fact that he has like knights and Griffins and just all the tier three tech in general, I think is really yeah. going to carry him. We did see a Blizzard retrain. I don't believe both players have retrained yet. No, Hylua is still on Water Elementals. Again, Dark's Demon Hunter is always a liability, or his heroes in general, taking a lot of damage on both the Naga and the Demon Hunter. He gets back home for now. Fights on both sides. The 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock position. Dark ends up losing his fight. Hylua also wins his fight, so Teal Team wins on both sides there. Paladin now meets up with Hylua's army, and he seems to just be kicking an overdrive, whereas Reaver may be waiting a little bit, although this Rifleman army, even though it's technically Tier 2 units, once the Inner Fire kicks in, once he gets a couple more upgrades, once he gets the Frag Shard Mortar Teams, Fragmentation Shard's on the way now as well for Reaver, this army's going to be really, really scary, even though it's not Knights, even though it's not Griffins. Inner Fire Rifles with Mortar Teams is pretty sick, especially with Bears to tank in the front. Yeah, what, what I am scared of on behalf of Dark and Reaver is that their front line is just going to be too squishy. Um, right. The the Night Elf player is the front line, and he's not the one with two bases. Um, we also see Griffins uh, from High Lewis side, which is going to really rip up the Bears very quickly. Um, so even though there are these like nice mortar teams, and they're going to do really well, or they would do really well in a long fight, I don't think we're going to see a particularly long fight, and I think we're going to see the front line possibly fall too early before the mortars could really uh, get their effectiveness in. Yeah, we're going to see the p first really big team fight here. All players have the armies that they wanted. 55, 75, 68, 50. So the supply is pretty close to even. Smurf with a slight bear edge. One bear goes down right away. The missed position here from Dark and oh, Reaver wow. is going to hurt them at the start of the fight. Again, the hero is slightly out of position. The Naga taking a lot of damage. Bear's kind of finding a decent arc for Smurf. The Griffins flying overhead. Naga just dies. That Naga's been a liability the entire time. The Blizzard not finding the value it needs to, but the Rifleman for Reaver quite well positioned, and they find some damage on those Griffins, and the Blizzard also hitting quite well. Demon Hunter, oh, eats a Holy Light, but still very, very low. Barely gets out alive. The heroes for Dark have just not been having a great game so far in the TP out now by Reaver. And double GG. Clean, crisp lock, boys. That's a 2-0. And there's the dream of a full Phantom Aces semi-final ruined! Smurf and Hylua, the lower seeds of uh, this match, defeating one of the favorites in the tour in Reaver and Dark. Clean 2-0, strong plays, the better strat and the better execution on both maps, I'd say. Yeah, I, I totally could see that Dark and Reaver, they felt, um, based on this gameplay, they felt a little flustered from the first game. Um, I, I wanted to, I, w I probably want to re uh, watch the game, but I think a key difference is from the human side, um, the level three versus level two matchup, and the fact that um, the, the footman had to be, uh, even though Reaver did a great uh, job of microing his footman back, um, he was constantly on the back foot in that engagement. Um, which allowed uh, which allowed Hylua and Smurf to push the the expansion from Reaver, even though all the players in the game or all the both humans in the game have expanded. Um, in addition, I think Reaver was uh, the, the Reaver was really flustered by the fact that they died to a push in the last game, 
and he was really focusing on, I have to get the second barracks up, I have to get those footmen out, and I have to defend this push when really the, the push never came, their opponent had the expansion. And I think because he had those two racks, um, that might have led to the decision uh, to go mass riflemen when that might not have initially been his game plan uh, from the start. Not a bad game. Smurf and Hailua, uh, positive surprise to me, I gotta say. Just everything working out well, everything was smooth, everything was clicking, and that was a nice gameplay for them. Dark and Reaver, maybe they'll join us for the cast for one of these games. Uh, great guys, today wasn't their day, really. Yeah, and, you know, it, it's easy to uh, to give credit to the human players here, being on 2-base again. Just like the, you know, easy to give credit to the orc and the undead from our last series of 2v2s. But uh, it really does come down to, again, sometimes the net of player. What opportunities can you find being on lower supply, having less units, having possibly lower level heroes in this case? Um, what can you find? And I do feel like it was just Smurf that was finding a lot more values. Winning is 1v1s, always had the healthier heroes, and Dark maybe just mispositioned a couple too many times, especially game one is what left them open to that timing, taking too much damage on his Demon Hunter. And in the last fight here on uh, Shattered Exile, again, Nog out of position, Demon Hunter out of position, Bears not finding the arc. So sometimes it just comes down to how you initiate the fight, and the Night Elf players really have to be on, on point when it comes to that. Holy crap, we just got 11,000 oh bits. That is $110 from Woody Wood. Actually, 1,000 bits is just from Peon Pillage, but 10,000 bits is from Torrent Pillage. Yeah, I mean, uh, we should get Pillage to Torrent if you cheer like that. Crazy, Woody. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, how many Torrents can you build with 11,000 gold? I'm sure if anyone knows that math, it's woody wood. It's it's actually zero because you need wood to build Torrance cars. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Boom! You did it to me. <laughs> That's why we got Monk on the broadcast for the expert analysis. That was a very early morning for you. I hope it was uh, worth the early alarm, Monk. Yeah, and uh, not only is it worth it, I'm going to be back here yet again tomorrow. Is it, is it the same time tomorrow, Neo? It is the same time, but it is different players, obviously, because we need to find the participants for the second semi-final. Here's the Liquipedia bracket for you guys. Pato and Scars over uh, Caspian and Sheik today, as well as Smurf and Hylua versus Dark and Reva. Tomorrow, we got two more Phantom Aces teams in Phalo and Inspired. That's a team I'm looking forward to. And also Dice and Razamoon coming back again. I'm not sure if they will be playing double night elf could just be dice with an off race human and then we have the big favorites probably well one of the top three two and two teams on the planet in starbuck and craft versus the underdogs in chilla and alacnum let's see how well prepared the underdogs uh, are we had some upsets here today hoping for more tomorrow and uh, I'm also hoping, Monk, that uh, the thing you're currently working on is going to be a uh, success. Since you got up this early uh, and will continue to get up this early, do you want to pluck a little thing here, maybe? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, of course, casting Warcraft 3 2v2 is my day job and how I earn all the big bucks. I do have this side gig where I am a, a video game developer. Um, uh, me and a bunch of us used to work at Blizzard, um, but since then, about three years ago, we uh, kind of branched off and formed our own company called Frost Giant Studios, um, where we're trying to develop the next Blizzard uh, style, what we call, like to call Blizzard style RTS, that's going to be called Stormgate. Um, we're really excited about this. Um, and if you want to check it out or learn more about Stormgate, you can, uh, number one, check out playstormgate.com or number two, as you can see on your screen right now, uh, go to our Steam page. You can just search Stormgate. And the best way to help us, the best way to support us, if you are excited about our game, is to click that wishlist bus button, wishlist us on Steam. That will get us higher on the Steam algorithm and it'll allow us to show off and advertise our, the game to as many players as possible like um like clicking the uh the the button to to donate to batterino uh for war three champions uh you can also uh click that button uh, the wishlist button in order to support St uh stormgate for completely free 
There we go. It's hopefully gonna be a success. I'm very excited about that. And uh, very excited to have you back tomorrow, Monk. And now I'm also very excited to uh, swap you out and bring the Remo Demo Man in because the one-on-ones are about to start. Monk, thank you so much. Uh, I think you go for a little nappy nap right now or will you follow the one-on-one -on -one games? Um, I am just so dedicated that I will uh, try to sleep while watching uh, <laughs> you guys, you beautiful people, cast the one-on-ones. Multitasking genius. Monk, thank you so much. See you tomorrow. We sent you guys into a tiny little break, but not without uh, advertising War 3 Champions to you people. It is the best server that this game has ever seen, as I uh, told you in the beginning of the series already. We have 28 servers across the entire world, doesn't matter if you're in Oceania or if you're in Southern South America. We got playable conditions for all of you guys compared to the three servers we got on Battle.net. We got nine 0.33 times the servers than a billion dollar company. Can you guys believe it? You can also uh, reconnect if you have a little hiccup in your connection. You can watch all the games via Flow TV. We also are working on a new launcher that gets rid of a lot of these join bugs that makes it possible to run automated tournaments for you guys. The one thing that Blizzard currently has over us, but you know, the automated tournaments on Battle.net, they're not working that well the auto tours on war 3 champions will and if you think man this community initiative is so damn awesome i want to support this but uh how well it's relatively easy guys you can of course do that with money as you can support everything with money uh, on the right hand side of w3champions.com you see a support us uh, section patreon paypal bitcoin ethereum litecoin and if you're from china alipay and wechat much 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 appreciated to keep the servers up to support the boys with a pizza or a cold one um just if you play a lot just one dollar a month goes a long freaking way uh, to pay for the servers but if you think well Economy isn't the greatest right now. Uh, money is tight, but I have some skills. Well, throw these skills at us. If you're a programmer, you can help with C Sharp, .NET, React, Rust, TypeScript, and Node. Since we have this new launcher, we also appreciate uh, graphic designers. We would appreciate uh, UI and UX designers and just to spread the word a little better than we currently do people for social media are also very much appreciated to reach out and to join the team go to the W3C discord which is linked on their homepage and talk to uh, Cephid, Atoxy, everyone basically in the admin uh, category so that's it for the twos next up are the one-on-ones and we got Soin, Foggy, Focus and 15 Sway. All the fans of Orc vs. Night Elf, this is your afternoon everybody plus of course the quarterfinal and then the big FFA later tonight. Don't go anywhere except to the Macherino w3cfinals.backtowarcraft.com for the support for these finals. 40 players needs to be rewarded and there's also September so if you want a discount on your Back to Warcraft support this is your month.